Hey everyone, and welcome to a new episode of How About That? I'm Vinny Langdon, and today on this episode, we're going to be talking all about food. I'm joined with my pal Sal from Patsy's Italian Restaurant. Sal, how you doing? Great to see you, my friend. Thank God. Everyone is healthy and safe. That's all we can ask in these crazy times. Hope yeah. you and your family are doing well. Yeah, everyone's doing well here. Now, you love food. I love food. I'm sure people at home love food. And we're going to be talking all about food on this episode. So introduce yourself to uh, my viewers out there, who you are, and a little bit about Patsy's. Where are you guys located? Sure. Uh, my name is Sal Scognamillo. I'm the third generation chef of Patsy's Italian Restaurant. We are in New York City on 56th Street between Broadway and 8th Avenue, right in the the heart of the uh, theaters and uh, Carnegie Hall and all that stuff that unfortunately is closed right now, but hopefully God willing, we'll be, we'll be back stronger than ever. And uh, I love food, like you said, it's been my life. And I love, I'm very fond of saying food is love. And that's the way a lot of us Italians show our love is making big, big dinners where people walk out the door and they have to loosen their belt and make sure they're happy. And uh, it's, it's been a wonderful privilege. I've been working and it's my family's business. They've been in business 76 years. My grandfather was Pasquale, but they called him Patsy when he came through Ellis Island. So, and it's very important to note, it's our only location. It's 56 between Broadway and 8th. And it's patsys.com on the web without the apostrophe, P-A-T-S-Y-S.com. And I've been there full-time 35 years. I studied television and film production. So it's sort of getting a little bit of that video uh, and now by doing these interviews and uh, I couldn't get a, I couldn't keep a, a job. I was a cameraman for six months and then I lost uh, that job and there was no more work. And my father asked me if I'd like to learn how to cook. And I said, sure. And it was uh, 35 years ago. My dad was the chef before me and before him was my grandfather, Patsy. So only three chefs in all these years. Wow. Amazing. That's such uh, you know, Great tradition, keeping it going. Now let's take us back. Let's rewind in time. You know, New York is, you know, historically known, you know, people that are watching this from other parts of the world go, man, New York, fine dining, you know, it's something that always pops out in their head. And that's kind of what your grandfather was aiming for, you know, when he decided he wanted to get Patsy's rolling off the ground. And tell us a little bit, when your grandfather came from Ellis Island, you know, what was his plans? Did he have, you know, a background in restaurants over where he came from or what? No, he, he came to America in 1928. And uh, his first job, I think, was driving a truck for uh, Macy's. It was, uh, it was back then. And he, he wanted into, uh, into the restaurant business by becoming a, a first uh, a bus boy. And he worked as a wait waiter and he worked himself up to be a manager. He always knew how to cook. His father knew how to cook back in Italy as well. And 1942, he opened his first restaurant called the Sorrento, about seven blocks from where we are now on 49th Street with a partner. And that partnership resolved uh, two years later, 1944, and that's when he opened Patsy's Italian Restaurant. And that was 1944, a crazy time during the end of World War II. Uh, war, you know, and it's, it's amazing what he did. He had so many different jobs, and, but by being in the restaurant business, he had a following. So believe it or not, our most, fam our most famous customer was, of course, Frank Sinatra. And in 1942, two years before my grandfather opened Patsy's, when he had opened the first restaurant called the Sorrento, a lot of people followed him from other restaurants he worked in. And one of the people that followed him to his new place was um, the band leader, Tommy Dorsey. Tommy Dorsey. And he brought uh, Frank Sinatra in one day, Tommy Dorsey, brought, Tommy Dorsey brought Frank Sinatra in and said to my grandfather, hey, Patsy, I got this skinny kid from Hoboken. You got to fatten him up for us. And that's how we met Frank Sinatra. And then he followed my grandfather when he opened uh, Patsy's in 1944. Wow, that's amazing. And amazing history. And then from him, there's so many of the people come whether it's a celebrity or people who just love uh, Frank Sinatra. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better uh, public relation person <laughs> to be talking about your restaurant. And it's, right. been, a great, it's been a great um, 
a great, great run with, the, with having uh, him as uh, our unofficial spokesperson. There we go. Awesome. You know, your grandfather could have renamed it to Sinatra's, you never know, right? <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. Now, what's great about your restaurant at Patsy's is you do have a variety. You know, the worst thing that can, you know, happen at a restaurant is you bring family, friends, a client to have a business meeting and you're going, man, I love this food. But the other person's kind of like, you know, I'm gluten free, I'm, you know, a vegan and they have all these, you know, maybe health or allergic to this or that. And you guys accommodate for, you know, anything. And for those who are unfamiliar with Patsy's, what are some of the dishes that you guys are known for? Well, uh, probably uh, the most famous is, and it's on the cover of our second cookbook, is the spaghetti and meatballs. People love it. it's the veal meatballs. And everyone says, well, you know, Italians usually do veal, beef, and pork. And, and that's, uh, truthfully, that's what my, uh, my mother-in-law makes them that way. And my mom makes them with just beef. But my grandfather, Patsy, he liked veal, number one, because it had uh, more of the... Um, more of like the, uh, the the moistness in there. There was a lot more of the moistness and it stays moist. And it was always very popular. We sell a lot of the veal rollatini masala. That's a veal scallopini beaten flat, rolled stuff with mozzarella prosciutto and masala wine and mushroom. Clam sauce is popular, either linguine white clam sauce or red clam sauce. We tend to put more tomato and stuff because we're from uh, Naples, Southern Italian cooking, so we use a lot of the tomato in it. And, uh, you know, all the Parmesans we sell a lot, stuffed artichoke, baked clams. I mean, the traditional Italian-American dishes that people, uh, people really love, you know, make specials with the lasagna, sell a lot of manicotti, uh, meat sauce, the, the, the bolognese sauce we sell a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a nice mix, but like you said, I'm very happy to accommodate people, especially nowadays as more people are gluten-free or vegan, things like that. I just did a cooking class where we made the uh, eggplant meatballs. And, you know, people say, why are you calling it a meatball? I said, well, I'm just making believe it's a meatball. Is it that eggplant? It sounds better than eggplant balls, right? I guess, you know. And, yeah. uh, and so people, you know, they look for uh, different items. There's uh, people who have the, you know, the dietary restrictions, of course. And uh, we have gluten-free pasta. And, of course, it's very popular. A lot of people are making the pasta, the, the, the uh, zucchini that looks like uh, linguine or spaghetti. Where you right. eat the pasta, you put some sauce on that. And it's, it's always our pleasure to do that. You know, I have people that are gluten-free and they haven't had a, like a real chicken Parmesan forever. And I said, I could still make it for you. Instead of flour, egg, and breadcrumb, I could put cornstarch, egg, and I have gluten-free breadcrumbs. And we bake it with the tomato sauce and it it's, uh, becomes a gluten-free item. And they're like, oh my God, I didn't realize I haven't had something like this in so many years. And it's, it's, it, I think that's what helps keep us going. We try and make everyone happy. Right, right. And speaking of over 75 years, 76 years, you know, what do you think keeps the business going? Is it those same repetitive customers that keep coming back for you guys, huh? Well, I think it's really most importantly is the level of consistency. I think the greatest compliment I've ever gotten was, you know, have customers that have been coming since before I was there, before I was born in some cases, God bless them. So the, the generations of customers, but, you know, always I'll greet someone with saying, oh, welcome back. I hope you enjoy everything tonight. And this gentleman said to me, he said, Sal, I know what the food is going to taste like before I sit down. That's why I come back to you. So we deal with also like the same uh, place we get the cheese. It's called Di Di Paolo Fine Foods. They're down in Little Italy. We've been the longest continu continuous customer for 76 years. They've been in business since 1920. And some of the fresh pasta I get from, it's called Raffetto's. They're also down there in Little Italy. They've been in business since 1906. But again, we're the longest continuous customer for 76 years. I think the consistency, the fact that our menu is, the heart of the menu has always been the same. You know, it, it, you're not one day you're a Tuscan trattoria, the next day you're Sicilian type of stuff. We've always been the Southern Italian Neapolitan restaurant. So I think that really is important. And of course, sounds corny nowadays, but grandma and grandpa taught me, say there's two things you do. When the customer walks through that door, 
You say thank you for choosing us with all the restaurants you could choose. And then you make sure that they, they leave happy. One way or another, you make sure they leave happy. It's, it's important to us. Right, right. And what I think what I enjoy about Patsy's too is, you know, you guys have available too. You know, you go and try, you know, the clams and you go, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Well, you, they can go on your website and they can find a variety of recipes. And you guys have, you know, over the course of years, you've produced cookbooks. And uh, tell my viewers a little bit about those cookbooks and some of the recipes online. Sure. Um, uh, we do every uh, Monday on Facebook. Our Facebook page, we do a recipe every Monday. And like I said, I've done some cooking classes. During even the quarantine, I did a couple of things from home. Believe it or not, <laughs> I had to clean up afterwards. My wife got mad at me. I'm just kidding. No, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's um, food is love. It's sharing. It's sharing uh, experience with people. When you sit down with a family and have a great family dinner, this that's one of the nicest things because you're spending time with everyone. And I'm so blessed I'm in a business that I have the opportunity to try and make people happy. And you were mentioning about the cookbooks and the sauce. Well, the sauce here, we came out with the sauce in for our 50th anniversary about 26 years ago. We sell it on our website, patsies.com. That's Again, without the apostrophe, P-A-T-S-Y-S.com. And it's certain select supermarkets throughout the country. And you know what's been great about this is that if someone has had this and has never been to our restaurant, I've gotten so many people that say, oh my goodness, if you can do this in a jar, I can't wait to have the food at your restaurant. But people should know that this recipe is what we use at the restaurant. There's no skimping, no saving. It is what it's supposed to be. So it represents us. And this is the marinara, most popular with garlic. And the other major sauce, the two major sauces, then is the tomato, the tomato basil, which with onions. And people say, oh my God, Italian food without garlic? How could you do that? And it's, a, you know, it, it, it is kind of funny when you think about it, but there's a lot of people who are allergic to garlic. There's a lot of people that garlic, it's harder for them to digest, but not, not because of that, because these are the two major sauces in the Neapolitan kitchen. From the tomato basil, we make the meat sauce. From the tomato basil, we make the vodka sauce. From the marinara, we make the fra diablo. From the marinara, we make the pizzaiola sauce or the puntanesca sauce. So those are the two major sauces. One is garlic, one is onions. And then I mentioned that the most popular uh, dish was spaghetti meatballs. This is the cover of our second cookbook, which came out in 2015, forward by uh, Ben Stiller been a lifelong customer, great people. Got some wonderful testimonies on the back. I've been on the Martha Stewart show several times and great write up. There's uh, Tony Bennett there, uh, George Clooney has been there. And you know what's interesting is, and I'll show you this the first book also, is that this forward here now was, this came out in 20, 2002 and this was the forward by Nancy Sinatra, Frank's uh, daughter. A lot of great stories in these cookbooks in both of them about Frank Sinatra, about my grandparents, about growing up. So it's not just a cookbook, it has a lot of history. And that's the real reason I did these books. And it's very funny, during, uh, during this time where we've had only the outdoor dining, you know, New York City is still outdoor dining, I had a woman who actually lives next door to the restaurant for 30 years. And she said something so, so interesting. She said, I've always been like a little intimidated to come here because you have the celebrities and the fancy and all that. But you are such nice people. The food is great. The prices are reasonable. I'm so happy that I was able to find you. So it's, it's sort of like sometimes people feel like, oh, it's a celebrity place. I shouldn't go there because maybe they won't treat us the right way. And again, this sounds corny, but everyone is treated like a celebrity for us. We love our customers. We appreciate our customers. Right. That is awesome. So Sal, for people that are interested, you know, maybe they're, they live, you know, outside of the New York area and they're thinking, oh, I got to try that sauce. I got to see how wonderful it is. Where is it available and how can people get it, you know, shipped to them? Well, you can check our website. We have certain stores that it's available in. Uh, if those stores are not in your area or you want to send it as a gift, let's say, it's, uh, it's our website, it's uh, patsies.com, without the apostrophe, P-A-T-S-Y-S.com, and we can ship right to you. We have the sauce, we have the cookbooks, we have some pasta, we have this olive oil carafe, which is extremely popular, 
It's really nice uh, ceramic uh, olive oil craft uh, imported from Italy. And it's a, it's a great way to give a gift. And also I'm working on is getting on uh, certain websites like there's one called goldbelly.com. Goldbelly does specialty foods throughout the country and they try and specialize in what your region, like in New York, they have lox and bagels and things like that. So I'm trying to get on that website. And if I do, we'll have some of our signature dishes. Besides having the sauce in a jar and the cookbooks making yourself, we'll have some of our signature dishes which ship to you, you know, overnight frozen. And that's another way of trying to reach us. I mean, we're very lucky in the sense that uh, our business is a lot of uh, tourists. But now that is, uh, is hard because, you know, without tourism in New York City, it's, it's difficult for people to come. And, and they've been so supportive. What's gotten us through this difficult time is all the emails and text and Facebook messages that people have been saying that we can't wait till we're allowed to come back to New York when, you know, the quarantine period is over, when, you know, the theaters open again. So I'm thinking that this uh, gold belly and our sauces and cookbooks is a good way for them to support us when they can't get here. Like I say, it's probably 70%, 75% of my business is out of town people. Wow, amazing. Now let's talk about, you know, you did mention earlier that you, you know, have a array of celebrities that come in and out and you have the regulars. But also, you know, let's just say someone wants to have, you know, their grandparents anniversary party or recently, you know, a lot of the graduations, a lot of these kids missed out. And maybe in the afternoon or something, they want to rent out Patsy's and do, you know, a lunch or something. Are you guys available to do that? Of course, we always are. I mean, it's obviously limited now with the situation with the uh, with the uh, virus. But as soon as that opens up, it's a great way to do it. We've had so many family parties, gatherings, uh, graduations. We even have a few small weddings. And a lot of people like to go in the upstairs room, which we were, for the 75th anniversary, we renamed it the Frank Sinatra room. And that's where he used to have his little privacy. We closed the curtains. He'd be back there. We had a separate entrance. He would come in. And it was just a... I caught the tail end of that. I met him when I was 13 years old back in 1975, first time I met him. And the first time I cooked for him, I was 21. And he came into the kitchen because he, my father was a chef before me. And Sinatra was in the dining room with my dad. And my dad had his suit on. And Sinatra said to my father, he said, how come you don't have your chef outfit on? So you got to cook for me. He says, no, my son Sal took over the kitchen. So I'm in, in the kitchen, I'm 21 years old, I'm cutting up an onion, and I hear the door swing open, and I looked up, I said, hi. <laughs> he says, hey, kid. I says, yes, Mr. Sinatra. He says, make sure you cook as good as your popcorns. And I said, you got it. You know, I was so scared, of course. But no pressure think, at all, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was, he was doing it to make me feel better, and it was just a, an amazing experience to catch that dig. Th those group of people you never see again, you know, the Jackie Gleasons and the Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis, great people. Yeah, yeah. Now, for those who, uh, you know, probably heard of Patsy's Italian Restaurant, have we seen it in maybe a movie or a TV show? Uh, last year, we were in a Christmas uh, show called Christmas at the Plaza, the Plaza Hotel in New York City. And um, a, a dear friend of mine, his name is Ron Oliver. He does, um, he, he directs and produces movies for the Hallmark Channel, a lot of the Christmas movies. And uh, there's a scene in there when uh, the two uh, love interests say, well, let me, you want, are you hungry? You want to get some dinner? And then what they did was they shot the outside of the restaurant. And then, of course, the inside was done on a set. And it's funny because it was summertime, but we had the, uh, the Christmas lights and the, and, the, and the fake snow there. And it was a lot of fun. And believe it or not, my wife and I were in a, a brief, brief scene in that movie, too. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, I think there was a couple of times where An uh, you know, Angela Lansbury's uh, Murder, She Wrote, they did some stuff where they shot, again, they shot the outside of the restaurant. Uh, there's upcoming uh, a new show. Um, I think it's 90 Day Fiance that they did a, a scene there. Uh, the, Jer the Jersey Shore did something recently. So... We've gotten some of those uh, publicity stunts too, as well, which is fun. Which is fun. it's always it's always a great thing because you know 
you got so many restaurants, you have to have something for people to know who you are. I mean, and we never take that for granted. We never take our customers for granted. We always are striving to make sure everyone's happy. We're always striving to make sure everyone knows about us. And this is this, I appreciate you doing this interview with me. It's another way to reach uh, another audience. Absolutely. And, you know, you did mention earlier that, you know, with the person who lived next door to you guys, you know, from an outsider's perspective, you probably go and peek through the window or you look at the menu and you go, oh my gosh, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm dressed to go to a Broadway play. I'm not dressed to go to Patsy as they may think, but tell us, I mean, you, you said you treat everyone like a celebrity people. Do they have to make reservations or is it, you know, is it just a little restaurant? It's always smart if, if you know for sure that you're going to have the table waiting for you than rather the other way around. But obviously, if you come and you don't have a reservation and we have a table, we're more than happy to, uh, to accommodate you. And, and, you know, as far as the intimidation factor, I can understand that, people, you know. But it, it is different. Years ago, we actually, 30 years ago or so, we, used, we require gentlemen to wear a jacket and, and things like that. But I think, you know, life in general has become more relaxed. And, I, and we've, we've changed with the times in that respect. And I don't think that, you know, I mean, we say, oh, please, no, uh, you know, T-shirts or ripped jeans and things like that. But, you know, even if that's the case, we're happy to accommodate people. As you know, so many times that people come in and they're very timid. They're like, oh, am I just okay? I said, the only requirement you have to walk in the door is if you're hungry. I said, so, you know, <laughs> that's what we like. So it, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it, it's a family-run business. And it's like... Again, these things sound corny in these days, but it's like you're eating in my own dining room, except my dining room is a little bit bigger. My kitchen's a little bit bigger here. And these are the dishes that grandma and grandpa always cooked at home. So it, it, come in, have a good time, enjoy yourself. We, we appreciate everyone. We never take it for granted. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, since it's, we're talking about food here, I want to talk a little bit about food tips because it seems like, the biggest problem with cooking clams and the biggest complaint and i know when i go to other restaurants and i'm like oh i'm craving clams you know get pull out the you know the garlic and the butter and all of a sudden you know you're three clams in and all of a sudden what do you taste you taste nothing but that nasty gritty sand and that just ruins it but when you go to patsy's you never get the sand and grit and Sal, could you give us, us some tips on how to get rid oh, of that? Cool. I mean, of course, it's important. Obviously, clams, they're in the sand, so you have to clean, make sure you clean them out. So after we open them, we cut them up, we wash them once, we wash them twice, and then we strain them. And we strain the water that comes out of the clams, the juice as well. And you have to strain it with like a, a, like a little a strainer or a mesh, like a, a little mesh uh, a cloth you know, cloth that gets out all that sand. If you do that, you really got to get 99% of it at that point. That's important to do. And, you know, clams, you don't cook for a long time. Another tip is just, you know, because they'll get tough, hard. If you just saute them, bring them to a boil, one or two minutes, they're good. You add your garlic and oil. We put oregano, pepper, and some parsley, basil. No salt because obviously there's plenty of salt in the, uh, in the uh, clam juice. And it's, again, it's a simple dish. You know, uh, sometimes people feel like they got to add things, they got to do different things. One of the biggest um, things I see that people do that I feel is a mistake is they feel like they have to cook their tomato sauce for like eight hours or something like that. And in most cases, like with a marinata or a tomato basil, as I showed you the two jars before, you just bring it to a boil. You brown your garlic or you brown your onions, which are olive oil. You bring the tomatoes to a boil. 10, 15 minutes, we add our tomato paste at the end. A lot of people I know put in the beginning, but that's the way grandma and grandpa taught us. And cook for another five to 10 minutes, and it's done. The only time you would, and then it, the only thing, if you, if you cook those two sauces a long time, you lose the tomato flavor. Remember the freshness of the tomato, 95% of the sauce is the tomato. The only time you would cook a sauce for a long time is when you make what, you know, Italians might refer to the ultimate confusion gravy versus sauce but sometimes it would be called a gravy if you put like a meat in it you cook a brajol it's got to take three hours to get soft you want to make your sausages nice and soft and then you cook them a long time put the meatballs in then you're going to let it simmer for a while and all those flavors will marry but the uh, regular tomato sauce marinara tomato quick sauce don't cook too long 
There That's my tip on that. Yeah. I love it. Perfect. And a lot of people, when they first hear vodka sauce, they're going, oh my gosh, I can't serve that to my kids. It's got <laughs> vodka in it. But <laughs> tell us you know, what uh, the. An obvious misconception is that there's alcohol, but when you cook, when you put the vodka in, you do put real vodka in the sauce. It, it, the alcohol cooks off at 170 degrees, so there's no alcohol content. But you still have the flavor. And it, in, an, in a vodka sauce, we add just a touch of crushed red pepper. Some people put cheese. I don't put cheese. I put a little bit of, excuse me, light cream to make it creamy. But if you like cheese, we add it after. And I just think, you know, everything in its purest form with the, you know, you have to have some seasoning, but don't over season things. And there's one example of not to. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's fantastic. Well, we learned a lot here on this episode of How About That? And I mean, Sal, we could talk all day. And <laughs> once this whole quarantine thing dies down, I'll have to come to the restaurant. We'll do another cooking segment in person. And, you know, tell us, how, how are you guys at right now? I know there's, you know, you guys are doing the outdoor dining. So please come to Patsy's. You guys are available for outdoor dining. You have a really nice setup, Sal. Tell us about that. Yes, uh, please come see us. Check our website or our Facebook because the hours are definitely limited now compared to our normal hours. Right now we're doing just at night from five to nine, but it's a nice setup. We uh, did, you know, obviously all the compliance that you have to do in New York City. We were able to go eight feet out from the curb and 20 feet wide, which is the width of our storefront. We put up to 10 tables on our property and we'd love to come see you. Please mention you saw us on the show. Um, I'm there all the time, and it's 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 a, fa a, a family affair. It's my wife is there, our two sons are there. Yesterday, uh, during the summer, was our 30th wedding anniversary. We we're working and doing good stuff, and we really enjoy and appreciate our customers. And if you can't come to us, again, we're at 236 West 56th Street, New York City, our only location. Uh, you can support us by buying gift certificates, buying the sauce, buying the cookbooks. Follow our Facebook page. It's uh, Patsy's Italian Restaurant. You can't miss it. And uh, we, we really do um, appreciate all our customers and all the uh, people that are reaching out and supporting us during this, you know, tough time for everyone. And like I said, most important thing, we're healthy, we're safe, we have each other, and we'll get through this. There you go. Fantastic. Well, Sal, it was great talking with you. And maybe Thanks. one day you'll see Vinny Langdon's headshot hanging up in the restaurant. Oh, I would love that, my friend. We got to take a picture next time. That would be wonderful. And good luck with your, uh, with your broadcast and everything. It's, it's good stuff you're doing out there, keeping the word out and uh, get all those good restaurants out there for us. Absolutely. All right, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Take care, buddy.